Alrighty, uh, part four. I uh, didn't think these would go that long, but I, I, an appropriate response is required uh, back to GNR head. Okay, picking up where we left off on uh, uh, James 2.20. Uh, here we go. He says here. He says, Do you want to be shown, you foolish person? Who is the foolish person? The foolish person here is the one who says that they have faith but do not have works to show it. Okay, so he's addressing a specific people here, the ones who say that they have faith, but their, their, their lives do not reflect any type of Christian love. The love of God is not seen toward their brethren, etc., uh, etc. Et that is the foolish person in context here. He says, Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Okay, so James is basically going to give the proof here that faith apart from works uh, should be should be discounted as being true saving faith true Christian faith okay he offers this proof he says was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar okay now really quick who is James I, I, again, who is he proving justification to, or, or what kind of justification? He's asking here, first of all, 2.20, do you want to be shown? Now, Paul's justification, if you look on uh, Galatians 3.11, Paul is addressing the issue of justification before God. Galatians 3.11, Romans uh, 3.20, uh, justification in his sight. He is referring to God there. So that's the justification that Paul is dealing with. Now, James is dealing with justification before who? Amongst each other. Do you want to be shown? Let me prove it to you. Okay? Show me. That's what James is asking in, in, in these previous texts. In, in uh, Luke 2.18. Show me your faith. Who's he asking? Is James God? No, this is a different type of justification. That's why the distinction is made there. Okay? She says here, again, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Now, again, the context here, what's going on with Abraham, okay? Abraham in Genesis 15, 6 is justified before God, okay? Genesis 15, 6. Uh, Abraham is shown all the promises, etc. Um, he brought him outside and uh, looked, now look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be, 15, 6. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Now, Paul uses that to show that that's the point where Abraham was justified by his faith alone in Romans chapter 4. Okay. Now, Abraham offering up Isaac on the altar takes place where? In Genesis 22. Okay. Now, the objection was raised, and here we go. I, I want to deal with this. Okay. Well, who is Abraham proving his faith to? He didn't have anybody watching him. Okay. Valid question. And I do certainly want to deal with it. Genesis 22. Let, let's look at the story, first of all. Okay. And then I'm going to be reading from another source very quickly. Okay. Um, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him. Two of his young men. And Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to be reading from a Bible background um, commentary on Genesis 22, 1 through 2, dealing with child sacrifice at that time. Um, it says here, in the, near, in the ancient Near East, the God that provides fertility, El, is also entitled to demand a portion of what has been produced. This is expressed in the sacrifice of animals, grain, and children. Texts from Phoenician and Punic colonies like Carthage in North Africa describe the ritual of child sacrifice as a means of ensuring continued fertility. The biblical prophets and the laws in Deuteronomy and Leviticus expressly forbid this practice, but that also implies that it continued to occur. In fact, the story of Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac suggests that Abraham was familiar with human sacrifice and was not surprised by Yahweh's demand. Basically, the culture in which Abraham lived in and essentially came out of um, his servants and Abraham himself would not have been unfamiliar with the practice of child sacrifice. Now, the servants help Abraham apparently to split the wood. They know what's going on. Okay, They also know that Abraham is going up to worship God. Uh, worship did not take place without a sacrifice. He didn't approach God without a propitiation, without making atonement of some sort. Servants know what's going on. Um, if Isaac is familiar with child sacrifice by the time I don't know, uh, you know, on his age and stuff, you know, he probably is going to end up knowing what's going on, what happens. Um, but where is the proof of this faith? Abraham tells the servants, "We're coming back." That's the demonstration of Abraham's faith that he previously was already accounted uh, as righteous before God in Genesis 15:6. The servants see Abraham's faith that he's coming back with Isaac. Okay, um, the reader goes or the writer goes on in there to say, you know, but uh, you know, there's also the demonstration of what made Israel different was the offering of animal sacrifices at this point in the in, instead of a child. Um, at this point, uh, the idea of substitutionary um, atonement. Okay, so. Abraham demonstrated his faith to these servants, okay, and obviously when the story goes out, it's demonstrated to all. It goes out to all the community. Hey, Abraham's faith, he has it. He really does. He didn't just say it one time in Genesis 15, 6. It really, the faith that was professed, the faith by which he was justified in Genesis 15, 6, really is there for the entire world to see. <clears throat> that is the proof that James offers. He's offering Genesis 22 as proof of Abraham's faith in Genesis 15.6. That's why he can say, you see that faith was active all along with his works, and his faith was completed by his works. Uh, let me check a different translation here really quick. Um, and his faith was made complete by what he did. That's the NIV. Um, and the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God. And James concludes, he says, you see, who sees? You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Again, in context, what kind of faith is, is James talking about here? The mere professed faith. What kind of justification is James talking about here? Show who? show you. Okay? And in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? Again, Rahab didn't just profess, you know, hey, I'll help you all out. She really did. And that was the proof of her faith. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith, professed faith merely, apart from works, is also dead.